Today we discuss a book called Prosperity by Charles Fillmore. This book was written many years ago, and Charles, being the founder of an organization called Unity, which has a number of branches, put together this book on the topic of prosperity. Now, this book is very deep, and as I was going through it, I realized that it would be better if I discussed this on a chapter-by-chapter basis. So we're really going to look at this video from the perspective of the first chapter, which is about spiritual substance. I believe this conversation will further dimensionalize our discussions that we've been having, as well as further help us realize the connectedness that we have, not just to each other, but what he refers to as the divine mind, which is very important, because this level of connection that we can establish within ourselves as a result of realizing this connection, which, by the way, was always there, is further realized through our creative expression, which is one of the ways of bringing forth prosperity. We talk about this in entrepreneurship. It's a service to others, a benefit for you, them, divine and evolution. It's a natural flow of creating products and services that benefits the life of others, as well as receiving compensation for it, prosperity. So let's reflect upon this important quote to kick off this conversation. He says, divine mind is the one and only reality. When we incorporate the ideas from this mind into our mind and preserve in those ideas, a mighty strength wells up within us. Then we have a fountain for the spiritual body the body not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. When the spiritual body is established in consciousness, its strength and power is transmitted to the visible body and to all the things that we touch in the world about us. So what he's proposing here is no different than we've been discussing. We are connected with the divine mind, universal mind, the all in all, as discussed in the Kabbalion. We stimulate in our imagination a goal or vision, something that we desire to see brought forth. And some way, somehow, we receive creative ideas, hunches, and inspirations to bring forth our vision. This level of connectedness is what we are looking to establish. I find that maintaining this connection is one of our priorities. One of the things that I did over the last few weeks was I went away for two weeks to Los Angeles, and I connected with a lot of people every day, and I had a number of client meetings, sessions, and every day it was back-to-back connecting with people. And this brought me a lot of joy as well as deep reflections as to what we have been discussing. And everybody was bringing to the equation different insights and perspectives that I want to infuse in the upcoming videos. One of the books that was brought forth to my awareness was this book right here, Prosperity. And it was from one of my clients, Angel, and he is someone that really lives this philosophy. He actually was able to find this book in a thrift store. It's amazing how some of these books that were written many, many years ago are still in circulation. And as he referred to them, he sees them as treasures. So he brought it to our meeting, and I looked at a handful of quotes from the book, and I knew right then and there that I was going to read this book. I was going to discuss it. Now, we are very blessed that these books now exist in the public domain, and you can find them on the Internet just with a quick search, and I recommend reading this book. But I thought to myself, I want to discuss it. But as I was going through each chapter, I realized each chapter contained deep insight and understanding. So much so that I said to myself, I'm going to have to discuss this book over a number of videos, like we've been doing with, for example, The Master Key System by Charles Hanel and The Three Magic Words by U.S. Anderson. So let's go deeper into this concept of the divine mind, as he refers to. He says, Spiritual discernment reveals that we are now in the dawn of a new era, that the old methods of supply and support are fast passing away and that the new methods are waiting to be brought forth 
In the coming commerce, man will not be a slave to money. Humanity's daily needs will be met in ways that are not now thought practical. Maybe he foresaw the world that we live in right now. Maybe he saw the opportunities, the technology, and everything that exists right now for us to be able to bring forth prosperity. And as we always say, faith, loyalty to the unseen reality, as we learned from Neville Goddard, reveals what already exists. Now, when we're referring to the spiritual substance, he defines it, matter is a mental limitation of that divine substance whose vital and inherent character is manifest in all life expression. This inexhaustible mind substance is available at all times and in all places to those who have learned to lay hold of it in consciousness. Very much keeping in alignment with our conversations, all change happening within consciousness, even accessing the ideas, the hunches, and inspirations available in consciousness within ourselves. As U.S. Anderson had discussed, and will now become easily one of my favorite quotes, every book was written by the same author. We are the divine conduits of expression of what he's referring to as the spiritual substance. So he states, the spiritual substance from which comes all visible wealth is never depleted. It is right with you all the time and responds to your faith in it and your demands on it. It is not affected by our ignorant talk of hard times, though we are affected because our thoughts and words govern our demonstration. In other words, we are interpreting the level of prosperity that we believe that we are a part of. When we realize that we're connected and connected to all prosperity that was, will, and ever exists in this eternal now, we begin to reevaluate our thinking our beliefs, our interpretations, as we've been discussing. He says, the unfailing resource is always ready to give. So this is what we want to instill further in our subconscious beliefs and interpretations. That this unfailing resource, which is the spiritual substance, which contains all ideas, everything that ever existed, is accessed by us and ready for us to ask. It has no choice in this matter, as he states, it must give, for that is its nature. So its very nature is giving. And our very nature is to receive and to also express, which is also a form of giving. As it is stated, we were created in the image of the Creator, and I've said this once before, created in the image of the Creator to create. Pour your living words of faith into the omnipresent substance. And you'll be prospered though all the banks in the world close their doors. Turn the great energy of your thinking toward plenty ideas. And you will have plenty regardless of what men about you are saying or doing. Substance is first given form in the mind. So the substance that he is referring to can be looked at as quoted here. Substance is first given form in the mind. And as it becomes manifest, it goes through a threefold activity. In laying hold of substance in the mind and bringing it into manifestation, we play a most important part. We do it according to our decree. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. We are always decreeing, sometimes consciously, often unconsciously. And with every thought and word, we are increasing or diminishing the threefold activity of substance. The resulting manifestation conforms to our thought as he thinketh within himself, so is he. We want to make this substance that faith has brought you to our mind enduring and abiding so that we do not lose it when banks fail or men talk of hard times. We must have in our finances a consciousness of the permanency of of the omnipresent substance as abiding in us. The way I like to look at this is giving and receiving as one. So we receive the hunches, the inspirations, the ideas. They show up each day through our allowing ourselves to receive within. 
simply observing, as we have discussed, the tension and reactivity, and not shaming ourselves as a result of tension and reactivity within ourselves to receive the ideas, the hunches for creative expression, but rather look at it as an opportunity. We can change our thinking surrounding it. All of a sudden, it seems that we have the ideas, the hunches, the ways about looking at whatever it is that we are observing, whatever we are experiencing. And we seem to know how to work with it. Key is work with it, integrating, seeing it as one. And we find even more integrations to see how it is all one. As we've been discussing, see the journey and the destination as one. That way we don't have, I would say, a bias towards one of another. Someone might not value the journey and see it as just something that they have to go through, the motions. And if reactivity happens, they don't value the understanding, the experiences, the learning that is presented in that opportunity. Someone values the journey and not so much the destination, then perhaps they don't realize that they can actually pick a goal and have what they desire to have, to commit to something, work with the formless substance. And then through the journey of allowing, receiving within, which is the conduit of divine expression, which is why we remove the inner resistance, because then we actually can be how we can ideally be in order to live the life that we want to live and bring forth the joy as well as enjoy the journey, which is as conduits of divine expression. So again, we merge giving and receiving and see it as one. Some might have a preference in the matter. Giving is better than receiving or receiving is better than giving. Combine it together and see giving and receiving as one. As he discusses, there is no reason why we should not have a continuous, even flow of substance, both in income and outgo. If we have freely received, we must also freely give and keep substance going. Confident in our understanding that our supply is unlimited and that it is always right at hand in the omnipresent mind of God. As you lay hold of substance with your mind, make it permanent and enduring. Realize your oneness with it. Remember, this is a major part of our journey. Realizing the oneness more so each day with each other and now the divine mind. Realize your oneness with it. You are unified with the one living substance, which is God, your all-sufficiency. From this substance you are created. In it, you live and move and have your being. By it, you are fed and prospered. The spiritual substance is steadfast and immovable, enduring. It does not fluctuate with market reports. It does not decrease in hard times, nor increase in good times. It cannot be hoarded away to cause a deficiency in supply and a higher price. It cannot be exhausted in doles to meet the needs of privation. It is ever the same, constant, abundant, freely circulating and available. So this is what we do. We look at this world and we say, okay, we have formed interpretations about how reality is. For whatever the reason may be, we seem to limit ourselves with these interpretations. We realize more so that we are connected with this one mind, which is connected to all minds. And you are the orchestrator of it all through what we imagine, what we think, what we believe. So, Prosperity can be looked at from many different perspectives. Wealth, prosperity, relationship prosperity. We all have different definitions of what prosperity means. You can take the word prosperity and can look at it from a general sense. And then we can understand the symbolic meaning that it has to us when we go beyond the word of prosperity. I would say that the symbolic meaning behind prosperity that is individualized to you was meant to be that way. And that would you affirm the word prosperity, which also affirms the symbolic meaning onto the subconscious, then we continue this process of giving and receiving, and or more accurately put, allow it to happen. How so in the most practical ways? Well, in the journey of entrepreneurship, we could say a person commits to a vision and then hunches, ideas, inspirations are received within. They have ideas for products and services. 
they find that they never run out of ideas as long as they remain connected, or as we've been saying, maintaining their flow or ideal state of mind, which is why I always say, make it a priority. Because as he states here, there is no reason why we should not have a continuous even flow of substance, both in income and outgo. And so we live it, the giving and receiving it as one. As he states, if we freely receive, we must also freely give and keep substance going, confident in our understanding that our supply is unlimited and that it is always right at hand in the omnipresent mind of God. And if you look at, for example, the business world or any kind of world, whatever category you want to put on it, we'll see the limitations and we'll also see those that ascend past those limitations. They seem to come up with creative ideas to innovate, products, services, markets. They're able to take raw materials or ideas from other industries or businesses and integrate it somehow into what they're doing to bring forth a success, an innovation, or an optimization, operational benefit, revenue increase, better value, quality, quantity, spirit of service to the clients, new marketing ways. All of this seems to be based on certain foundations, principles. And one of the core principles is this idea of the spiritual substance, which, by the way, was discussed also in The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. And upon reflection, I realized that we always work with this. One of my favorite things to do is when I'm connecting with people is Observe how they communicate about experiences or times in their life when they seem to, whether they know it or not, feel this deep connection with this divine mind. And they'll all say the same things. Somehow I knew what to say, what to do. Ideas showed up. I would be able to move forward with those ideas. And everything I touched seemed to turn to gold. He says, in the new era that is even now, at its dawn, We shall have a spirit of prosperity. This principle of the universal substance will be known and acted on, and there will be no place for lack. Supply will be more equalized. We're seeing this. Certain resources that we seem to deplete from the world are replaced with other ways, innovative resources or transcendent resources. We see this in our world. Certain resources that appear to be depleting seem to be transcended by other resources that provide the same value, the same benefit. And these resources are infinite, such as solar, for example. And in some spiritual philosophies, they say the sun provides everything. Now, we can look at this and say it was always there. Now we're realizing it more so. We're able to see it. And how is it that we're able to see it? Based on the removal of certain thinking, interpretation, beliefs that were rooted in lack, that seemed to create this illusion of separation between the individual mind and the divine mind. And so he states, in the new era that is even now, and it's dawn, we shall have a spirit of prosperity. The principle of the universal substance will be known and acted on And there will be no place for lack. Supply will be more equalized. There will not be millions of bushels of wheat stored in musty warehouses while people go hungry. There will be no overproduction or underconsumption or other inequalities of supply. For God's substance will be recognized and used by all people. Men will not pile up fortunes one day and lose them in the next. For they will no longer fear the integrity of their neighbors nor try to keep their neighbors share from them. He also goes on to say, Is this an impractical utopia? The answer depends on you. Just as soon as you individually recognize the omnipresent substance and put your faith in it, you can look for others around you to do the same. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, and even one life that bears witness to the truth of the prosperity law will quicken the consciousness of the whole community. I remember reading 
I believe it was Power Versus Force or Letting Go by David Hawkins, where he spoke that in his scale of consciousness, that those that exist at a higher level of consciousness, just their existence on the planet has the ability to transform many others, which is also very much related to what Neville Goddard speaks of, of everyone is you pushed out, and now also seems to have this parallel in what he's referring to in this book here, where this individual or individuals seem to be accessing this universal substance or the spiritual substance to pull ideas, hunches, and inspirations, which I also believe is related to the concept of infinite intelligence. We've all had glimpses of this. Think about it. Reflect back on your life where you had these moments where you just seemed to know what to say, how to express. Creativity just flowed through you. And ideas and ways of thinking, you were receiving it from within. You were wondering, where was it coming from? This book holds the key in relation to prosperity. And as we had stated, prosperity is described individually or interpreted individually based on our own perspective. But the truth remains the same, as he states here. Is this an impractical utopia? The answer depends on you. Just as soon as you individually recognize the omnipresent substance, which we are one with, and put your faith in it, which can be done through a vision, loyalty to the unseen reality, as Neville Goddard puts it, something we desire to see brought forth. Because when you bring it forth, you realize how it works. You understand how this journey works, which Neville refers to as the bridge of incidents. You harmonize the journey and the destination, see it as one, because you recognize that with every destination, there's a journey that leads to the destination. Some way, somehow, it's brought forth. And you have less resistance, less need to control those aspects. You will be more connected with what we refer to as Wu Wei, knowing when to act and when not to act. Again, all are guided from within. He says, this will open the door of your mind to an inflow of substance-filled ideas. Exactly what we've been talking about. Substance-filled ideas. He says, as they come, use them freely. Do not hesitate or doubt that they will bring results. They are God's ideas given to you in answer to your prayer and in order to supply your needs. They are substance, intelligent, loving, eager to manifest themselves to meet your needs. Now, I really want to zone in here into this part. They are substance, intelligent, loving. So when I reflect back on my journey, like for example, even starting this YouTube channel, the very first official video was putting out that living out of the backpack video in which I was transitioning out of my IT business and I got rid of everything and put it in a backpack and went to Europe. There was a part of me that was saying, this doesn't make any sense. Why are you going to make a channel about this? Maybe make a channel talking about business, make a channel talking about something else. And the idea seemed illogical at the time. But I knew that as a result of previously working with this, and we all have, that a lot of times this substance speaks in ideas and ways that might not make sense on the surface. They're intuitive ideas. So then you do it. So I did it. And then that video ended up going viral and then so started out the channel. The same is to be said about uh, when I was building my IT business and in the earlier stages maybe had a few clients here and there, but I needed to grow. Then all of a sudden, an idea popped in my mind and said, message someone on Facebook. He had a Facebook group, and he was connecting or masterminding with entrepreneurs in Toronto. And in his Facebook group, didn't have a lot of people in there, but something said, connect with the individual that runs the group. So I did. I messaged him and asked if we'd meet up for coffee. We met up for coffee. We worked a deal out. I would refer business to him. He would refer business to me. He was building Joomla websites, and I was doing IT services. Three or four weeks later, he refers me to a steel company, and the steel company gave me so much work that I had to hire my first contractor. And not only that, the company had an accountant who very much enjoyed the way we were dealing with him as a client or his company as a client and asked us if we would come in and serve her business. So we did. We served her office, and then she started referring me to many different businesses, so much so that I had to at one point say to her, 
can you please stop the referrals because we just didn't have the infrastructure. And we were getting a lot of referrals because accountants know a lot of people. So the thing about this is this is how it happens. A lot of times we think, how am I going to bring forth this success? How is it going to happen? When we realize that we are one with the divine mind and we're connected to it, and then contained within the divine mind is infinity ideas, all we have to do is keep the faith and maintain, as Neville Goddard puts it, the feeling of the wish fulfilled, which is the ideal state of mind. How do you know? when you have less or no doubt or inner resistance about your vision. That's why we work with it subconsciously. Maybe the overthinking and the mental chatter seems to bubble up all kinds of doubts and ideas of how it won't be brought forth or the stress involved or any kinds of interpretation, which is, by the way, a result of what I was referring to earlier, our interpretations of how this all works. But that's okay. We release it more so each day. We understand what those interpretations are, and we release from them. We change how we relate to it. As we change how we relate to it, we actually allow ourselves to receive this information. We connect to the inner voice. For me, I find this information is received through a hunch, inspiration, intuition, inner voice. And on the surface, it might not make sense. But then you go and do it. And it's nonlinear, usually. And these nonlinear ways seem to carve out pathways to the destination when you look back on it, you say, I really did enjoy this journey. So this is always being expressed to us. When we look at prosperity in relation to our discussion, as reflected upon this book here, and tying in the giving and receiving as one, we're always receiving these ideas. And these ideas are expressed through our creative expression. And they create product services, benefit the lives of others, helps others, and we receive compensation for it. And so it's like the giving is being presented to us, which is the receiving, and then we're further giving it away for others to receive. And not only does it provide the benefit, but it also provides the inspiration because you're actually living the philosophy, which then relates to, as he states here, just as soon as you individually recognize the omnipresent substance and put your faith in it, you can look for others around you to do the same. Other people start doing the same things. You'll start to notice that as you're living this way, others around you start living this way. And this continues, and it continues to spread. And that's what I believe is one of the greatest things that we can do, is to continue living this philosophy of prosperity by receiving your prosperity, sharing the prosperity, to further inspire the giving and receiving as one in prosperity. So let's conclude this with an affirmation. You can say, I realize that I am one with the divine mind. This spiritual substance provides all ideas, hunches, inspirations that I will ever need to bring forth my results. As a result, I listen, act upon, and bring forth. I express it through my prosperity. Others receive it and also externalize as expressing it through their prosperity. I then realized that the substance that forms all things is infinite and is eternally giving for me to receive. As I eternally receive, I eternally express, which is a reflection of eternally giving. I then, through the journey, realize and understand through the expression, giving and receiving as one. And I live this day in the spirit of prosperity, recognizing that the principle of the universal substance will be known and acted on in which there is no place for lack. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.